So now I'm going to describe the different pieces of the drum kit itself. <clears throat> you basically have your hi-hat stand for the hi-hats. Um, these are two cymbals that are usually a little thicker um, than the rest of the cymbal kit, except for the ride cymbal. Uh, and depending on the music that you're type, kind of playing, whether it's rock um, or just a little bit of a beefier style of music, your, your crash cymbals will be huge and thick. But for now, for the hi-hats, you have, usually have a pair. These vary in sizes from 13 to, I hear now, 17 inches. Um, these are your basic 14-inch cymbals, and they're, um, they're hats, they're, they're called hi-hats. And <clears throat> the only way to play them is to acquire what is called a clutch. And these come in different shapes and sizes, but for the most part, they need to have two main things. They need to have somewhat of a nut or um, something to screw in at the bottom of the clutch with two varying pads that what happens is when you take the clutch, you're going to take it into the top of the hi-hats <clears throat> and you're going to put it in the middle of the assemble itself using the second um, cushion to put on top of that and then you're going to use the nut to screw in and make sure the actual, the, the swinging of the actual uh, cymbal allows you to have a little bit more of a, an open sound when you're, when you're playing. Some drummers like to have it tight. I like it to have it in between tight and loose, just so that when I hit it, when I hit the, the cymbal, I'm not putting a lot of tension on the bell. And then, you are going to take your bottom hat and you are going to apply it to the stem of the hi-hat stand and you are going to take the second symbol or the, or the top and you are going to use the same stem and use it to fall on top and it will have a little bit of play um, but what you're going to do is this particular screw is going to allow you to have going to attach it to, to the rod, giving it the pull, or if I do it a little bit heavier, so you can see it. What it does is it basically separates the hats, giving it an open sound or a closed sound, depending on what part of the music or song you're actually playing. This is controlled by a pedal down below for a foot pedal, and what it does is it pulls the stem up and down, <clears throat> giving you control of what the, the symbol is supposed to sound like. So, and it'll also help in giving you time. So when you're playing a song, you can use it for counting or you can use it to count the music in. So, moving on. <clears throat> Another type of symbol, like I mentioned earlier, is called a crash symbol. This particular symbol is an 18 inch crash. And uh, the way to play this is you would need to mount it or find a symbol stand at your local music store and they come in all shapes and sizes, um, sturdiness, durability wise, and between your price range, you're looking at anywhere between 80 to $150, sometimes even more than that per stand. So it can get pretty pricey depending on what you want to play. It doesn't need to be that expensive in the, in the beginning, <clears throat> but as you get into your career, you'd probably want to invest more into it. So you basically take your symbol, and it has kind of the same application where you have your cushion and you have somewhat of a screw or a wing nut on top. And you basically you put it like that. And most of the time they give you these because they don't, you sh your cymbal should never be hitting what's fastening it to the actual simple, simple stand. So you just put this on. And the cymbal stand allows you to play with, with the height and whatnot. So gives you an adjustable range of how you want to hit it based on your com comfortability. Instead of having another stand for this, this is basically a ride cymbal. You have a bigger bell and you have a much lar like larger range of how to play it. It, does, it doesn't have quite the volume that everything else does depending on what kind of cymbal it is, but it basically allows the music to breathe and in a jazz or rock or any sort of type of music, this, these are pretty standard. Um, the ride, the crash, and the, and the hi-hats are basically all you really need to play a song. <clears throat> and 
and they are very loud, depending on which ones you're playing. The, the other piece of hardware, this is called a TomTom. -tom. And what it does is it basically gives you um, a varying range of pitch and it allows you to sort of roll along the kit or play a roll outside of a normal beat. And um, depending on what size of the actual tom itself will either be higher or lower depending on the diameter of it. So if this was, this is an actual 12 inch diameter, so it's going to give a specific sound. If there are tom toms that range from six, eight, 10 and get into 12 and go all the way down into a 20 inch floor tom, which I will now, now show you. <clears throat> this is a 15 inch floor tom. Um, as you notice, it doesn't really attach to the floor because I have a, a mount on it that goes to a cymbal stand. Um, but this would be something that would go to the right of your bass drum and allow you to end um, or better end a roll when you're playing a particular beat and get you out of um, the roll into a cymbal crash and you can continue moving on with your beat. But again, based on the diameter of the floor tom, it will either be deeper or higher in, in pitch. And uh, this shell actually has a lot to do with it too. So the thinner the shell, the deeper the sound, the thicker the shell, about the higher the sound. And um, that's your basic drum set. If you'd like to learn more about playing drums, please click on any of the videos that you see here.